Welcome to the Geoecologist. In this session on environmental geography, we are going to learn about aquatic biomes. So we are going to look at the biomes related to the coastal area as well as the freshwater regions. So in the world, what is their distribution? What are their characteristics? And what are the issues related to these particular biomes? So let's go ahead. Now before we go ahead, please like and subscribe to the channel The Geoecologist and you can also follow us on the Insta handle that is The Geoecologist. Now let's understand that aquatic biome is the largest of all the biomes that we have studied by far. It covers 75% of Earth's surface. So that's about two-thirds of Earth's surface is covered by aquatic biome. Because biome is a geographical concept it means it covers a specific area and all specific area have specific unique ecosystems and unique features of flora and fauna. So this biome is usually divided into two categories. So broader division is freshwater and marine. It means freshwater ecosystems that are there in freshwater biomes making it a particular biome on land and marine that is the oceans. So that is a broader category of the biomes that is aquatic. Now typically if we understand the freshwater habitats these are less than even 1% remember they have even less than 1% salt. So basic idea is the difference is the salt content right if it is more salt content then it is not fresh water it is away from fresh water right so marine life however has to be adapted to living in a habitat with high concentration of salt so as we know that oceans have high concentration of salts so marine life is a habitat where all those plants and animals live in a high concentration of salt but whereas in freshwater habitats salt concentration is very less so freshwater habitats includes ponds lakes rivers streams while marine habitat include ocean and all those salty marshy areas all right now let's go ahead and understand other characteristics so first one the classification of the biome that we saw was broad category so freshwater biome is the first one now we divide it into several other biomes as well so first we learn about freshwater biome so its basic characteristic is that it is naturally occurring water on earth's surface okay so remember it is the naturally occurring water on where not in ocean on earth's on the land surface that's important the water of ice sheets ice caps glaciers icebergs remember bogs ponds lakes rivers stream groundwater so many are there the sources of fresh water right but we remember that fresh water has low concentration of salt and other dissolved solid particles in it that's why it is fresh in nature right now for example if you look at lake baikal it is the largest freshwater lake by volume in the world lake baikal remember containing 22 to 23 percent of world's fresh surface water so remember this statistics that is about 22 to 23 percent of world's fresh water is there itself in lake baikal now plants and algae are important components of freshwater biomes remember plants and algae are one of the major components of this particular biome so this biome is important for human beings us and our survival as we know it and because it provides water for our living that is drinking and other purposes and it also is the source of energy for our daily activities Okay, so even if we understand the composition of human beings body, remember two thirds is water or more than two thirds is just water, right? So water in terms of fresh water biome is highly important for human survival. Now examples and characteristic features let's understand for example ponds and lakes both are stationary bodies. Okay, so these are static bodies of fresh water. They don't have movement. Okay, so with ponds being smaller than lakes. So that is the difference. So ponds are smaller in this size. Okay, now in the shallow that is sunny waters, what happens? Shallow water is where sun penetrates to a particular level. That's what shallow water means. So there is an abundance of life. Okay, and also various fishes. So in deep dark waters, what happens? They don't survive. So who survives? The decomposers survive. Okay. So rivers and streams are moving bodies, but ponds and lakes are stationary bodies. That is the difference. And 
they are fresh water bodies and largely made up of runoff from sources such as melting of glaciers or rain water that we understand right the formation of river in details we are going to study the river when we are studying geomorphology so river and streams usually empty into lake or the ocean that's how it is connected so at the beginning what happens there is fast flowing river or stream and then water is also having more oxygen and it is clear but gradually on the way what happens as it moves further it also picks up debris and other materials and that's why oxygen levels gradually fluctuate or many a times it is less because of the inclusion of many pollutants in it right so that is what happens with this now let's understand the second one in terms of fresh water but a significantly different kind of characteristics that's why it is fresh water wetlands so wetlands are little different features so we have categorized it separately to understand it clearly so wetland is a land area that is saturated with water and it may be permanently or seasonally even saturated with water so that is important now fresh water wetlands are ecosystems that are affected by permanent or temporary rising of body of water and it's overflowing onto normal dry land so many a times what happens a uh, recharge is there in this season when it is monsoon in terms of indian context if you see so there are many wetlands which are seasonal in nature which happen to rise because of the inclusion of waters from the surrounding river but then again it dries up so that is one kind of feature that it has now it plays an important role in the regulation of water flow and water quality and it is also very much important as we know because of the habitation of different specific unique flora and fauna okay so many a times migratory birds also come there and many specific unique flora fauna is available so as we remember for wetlands we have a ramsar convention that is there for the protection and conservation of the wetlands now let's understand that marsh bog fen swamp mire slough and prairie pothole these are different types of fresh water wetlands okay these are fresh water wetlands and these are several names in the entire world if you see the various places have various kinds of features that are found now cattails and sedges these are common plants that are grown up in the soil in this particular biome okay and all types of amphibians you can find out like frogs toads salamanders and so many others in this particular wetland biome so that is why it is a unique biome in itself that's why we have classified the freshwater biome into two segments so river pond lake in a separate segment and the wetland in a separate segment now the third one is the marine biome where we remember maximum salt content is there the oceanic component is there so let's understand the pacific atlantic indian and arctic the major oceans right so that's what we have here and it is one of the biome that helps in life processes regulation on earth okay the maintenance of earth climate the temperature regulation the precipitation regulation the weather conditions of the place all these are regulated by this particular marine biome the oceanic system right so it provides rain for crops through evaporation and circulation of air through wave and currents so that's what we understand that if monsoon doesn't come in india then what happens we have a drought situation isn't it so and monsoon is regulated through oceanic circulation that we all know so that is what the relationship is about the marine biome and its relationship with human beings because if we want food security we need our marine resources and marine biome to be in a healthy condition right then the deepest part of ocean which are too dark okay they do not support photosynthesis the word itself is photo means it's coming from light so there is no photosynthesis so what is there chemosynthesis means there are organisms that perform chemical reactions to obtain energy and they survive in the darkness of deep oceans so that is the basic characteristic of marine biome now let's understand a separate part of this marine biome that is the shallow part that is also many times known by the particular sea anemone that is present that is corals so coral reef biome that is a segment of the marine biome itself which is the shallower part so what is coral it's a marine colonial polyp okay so and it has a calcareous skeleton 
remember calcareous is calcium containing lime containing skeleton now remember coral reefs are formed due to accumulation and compaction of the skeletons of these particular lime secreting organisms and in details we are going to learn more about coral reefs in a separate lecture so here just we are outlining the basic characteristics now it is found in clear tropical ocean entirely between 30 degree to 25 degree north and south okay so this is where it is found three types of coral reefs are there fringing reef barrier reef atolls so these will in detail we are going to study in a separate lecture now it is the most diverse kind of ecosystem on planet why because there are numerous places and numerous utilities we have found in this kind of diversity of this coral reef ecosystem so let's understand that there are many medicinal values even for treatment of cancer arthritis bacterial infection alzheimers heart disease viruses so remember it is of great value to human beings and remember that's why we are concerned about the coral reef bleaching that is a problem so it is necessary to protect coral bleaching because also it is of a great utility and for humanity and in terms of the conservation for environment it is important to regulate various processes associated as well so both natural aspect and human aspects though those both are important for the coral reef biome and the fifth one is the estuaries remember it's neither a fresh water nor a marine that's why we have classified the broader classification is just fresh water and marine but we have classified into five categories the fifth one is estuaries because it lies somewhere in middle so it is an area where fresh water of river mixes with salt water of the sea so there is a intermixing happening right and what happens it is a transition zone remember we have studied ecotone it was a transition zone on terrestrial biome in aquatic biome estuaries are the transition zone okay so ecotone is on the land aspect and on the marine aspect if we see or the aquatic aspect if we see estuaries are the ecotones so they are transition zone between a river environment and a marine environment right so there are four types of estuaries if you see coastal plain estuaries tectonic estuaries bar built estuaries and fjord estuaries why they are different because of the process of their formations so when we study the geomorphology part will understand how they are formed like what are the tectonic processes how these bar built estuaries are formed what is the process behind the formation of the fjords in details we learn there but for now you can understand there are four different types and it is the home to unique plant and animal communities that's why it's more important and brackish water it has it's very much important even for tourism in some segments in india as well and in world as well so for example fish like salmon sea trout migratory birds so many like black tailed godwit there are many birds and also fish varieties that are specific and uniquely found in such estuaries biome that's why they are very unique all right so we completed this five types of aquatic biome larger category marine and fresh water and we have divided into sub categories of five to make it proper understanding for you all so thank you for watching and subscribing to the geoecologist keep safe stay safe.